Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Val. Uh, I welcome those who have joined us uh, in the Microsoft webinar platform, as well as those who are joining our uh, live stream. Uh, today, I will be conducting a webinar um, on Microsoft Azure and Microsoft 365 uh, cost management and cost savings. The uh, theme of this webinar is uh, how to save 30 to 40 percent on your Microsoft Azure and uh, Microsoft 365 subscription. Uh, a few words about me. Uh, I'm a systems architect. Uh, I mostly focus on Microsoft technologies. I have uh, over 20 years of experience in uh, this field in system analysis, design, integration, and project management, uh, uh, as well as cybersecurity. Uh, I'm a Microsoft VTSP and a former Microsoft trainer. Uh, I am a guest uh, lecturer and former uh, student uh, alumni uh, of Northeastern University and the high-tech MBA program at Northeastern. Uh, I'm a LinkedIn uh, featured writer uh, and I uh, mostly work in uh, Microsoft Azure, Microsoft 365 consulting uh, for the past uh, 12 or so years. Prior to that, I worked in Enterprise IT uh, and I hold these webinars um, every two or three weeks to focus on uh, a Microsoft technology that's promoted by the Microsoft um, Cloud Partner Network. So without further ado, today's theme is um, Windows, Microsoft 365 uh, and Azure cost accounting and cost reduction. And I will um, cover uh, 14 uh, proven tips and techniques on reducing your subscription cost um, to help your business optimize and reduce clouds pro. So some interesting factoids, 60% uh, of tenants don't use virtual machine reservations. 80% uh, of organizations are oversubscribed in their licensing. Uh, average percentage of licenses 16% uh, of licenses are assigned to disabled accounts. 12% of public IP addresses in Azure are not bound to any NIC service or interface. Uh, and 40% of customers that have hybrid benefits don't use them, mostly because they don't know how. So this describes the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, over the past few years, uh, especially as the economy tightens, uh, cost reduction and cloud pro prevention have become uh, quite popular. And in the past uh, year or so, we have seen demand from customers uh, for cost accounting and cost reduction in Azure and Microsoft 365. And some of the most prevalent themes that we found uh, and learned working from other customers are that licensing and Azure usage audits are infrequent. Um, they're far in between and most companies don't have a dedicated person assigning assigned to optimizing subscriptions and costs. Uh, Microsoft 365 licenses are over provisioned and some users that are assigned products uh, that they use don't need them. Uh, so there's a high percentage of users who, who have products and features that they don't need or um, products and licenses are assigned to disabled users. Uh, so majority of uh, 
customers are oversubscribed. Uh, there are more licenses than users. Um, if there are per user licenses, like enterprise for Microsoft 365, uh, and there are more operating system licenses than operating systems in the environment with the enterprise or M365 device license, for example, because customers don't have an accurate count of their devices. Um, when older Azure VMs are deleted, associated resources are not cleaned up and they continue to incur costs such as public IP addresses, network security groups, uh, resource groups, um, Azure storage and um, hard drives or virtual hard drives. Uh, there are more virtual machines that don't utilize reservations than those that they do. So customers are losing out on savings that could be achieved with um, VM reservations. So I will be covering uh, 14 tips and strategies to cut those, to cut the costs. Um, and reduce uh, uh, subscriptions pro in Azure and Microsoft 365 and environments. Um, so first one is right size your resources. Uh, this requires a regular review um, and adjustment of the size of, of your virtual machines based on actual usage and performance. Um, choosing the right virtual machine size for the workload and the performance that the virtual machine needs by monitoring. You can do that by monitoring performance over time um, and review utilized IP addresses uh, to remove IP addresses that are not bound to network adapter or a firewall. So this will be a review for some, but as you know, when you choose a virtual machine um, in Azure, uh, there is a monthly cost based on um, number of virtual CPUs, uh, RAM, which is memory, uh, IOPS, uh, which is demand on storage, um, and that gives you your your monthly price. So, for example, um, this one here has two CPUs and eight gigs, and the price is eighty-four uh, dollars per month. So, typically, when they go higher on the CPUs here and higher um, on data and RAM, as well as input output, then you see that the cost goes up. So as you go uh, with your subscription and the time goes by, you pay f these costs every month. So the more virtual machines you have, the more you pay. And obviously, if you're oversubscribed, uh, that adds up. For example, uh, here's one virtual machine that um, we found in a customer subscription um, using performance monitoring. You can see right here that it had 32 gigabytes of RAM and four virtual CPUs. This is the machine's size. So this machine was pretty expensive. It's around $160 um, cost without scaling reservations. And you can see that it's been running with 23 to 27 gigabytes of available memory and the highest that it has ever gone here uh, on CPU demand is 15%. So, and this here, this graph in uh, monitoring shows you utilized performance over one month. So, this machine is obviously oversubscribed and uh, the customer can uh, change the machine size to a cheaper um, 
virtual machine as this level of performance is not needed. So that's how we look for that, is we look for actual performance demand on virtual machine for the past month. And if we see that uh, the virtual machine sizing is oversubscribed, then So the next one, um, as discussed, uh, Azure reservations. So reservations allow you to reserve instances of virtual machines for a one to three year term uh, for the virtual machine. And that can offer a cost saving of up to 40%. Uh, in some cases, up to 60%, depending on the term that you pick. Uh, and auto scale, auto scaling um, is a feature where you can implement auto scaling to dynamically adjust uh, resources based on demand, um, scale up uh, the quantity of virtual machines or services during peak times uh, to only pay for them during those peak times and scale down during periods of uh, lower demand. So how does um, reservation work? So this virtual machine here, for example, this is the size um, E4S version three. You can see it has four CPUs, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the cost per month is $227. And above you can see the prices with reservations. So th this here is the cost of the same machine uh, with a one year reservation. Um, it's $133, so that's a 41% savings. And here's the same machine with a three year reservation, you're saving 62%. So it, the per month, cost goes down from $227 per month to $85 per month. A um, couple things to keep in mind is once you commit to the reservation, um, you are going to pay for it, um, even if you cancel your subscription. The way that Microsoft charges for those uh, reservations also is you pay uh, like on an S curve that goes up like that and then goes down. So you you pay during the middle of your um, term the most and then over time the cost goes down. So you have to account for um, this payment methodology that Microsoft applies, but overall over the cost of the of the subscription, you can expect to save forty one percent for one year or sixty two percent for three year, and this would depend on on the virtual machine type. Uh, you can save more on some virtual machines and less uh, on others, and then the the other methodology that I mentioned is auto scaling. So you can auto scale uh, vertically or auto scale horizontally. Um, you can uh, vertically scale up, which means you increase the size um, or capacity of individual instances. Um, so you can upgrade a virtual machine if more memory CPU or storage is needed, or you can scale down, which is reducing the size um, of the instances. So um, Azure will automatically choose the right size of your machine um, based on performance. And then horizontal scaling is scale, scaling out. Uh, you can reduce or increase uh, the number of instances of a virtual machine container or application service based on demand. Um, so we see this used a lot by uh, e-commerce companies or retail uh, stores during the holiday season, they scale up um, horizontally the number of virtual machines uh, or application services as the demand for 
their website or e-commerce service increases during the holiday uh, season. And then, um, so they have, they have more visitors who use the application. So the application instance is horizontally scaled out uh, during the holiday season, and then it's, it's scaled back um, in January when number of visitors is reduced. There's also um, Azure cost management and billing module, um, which is a module in the Azure portal um, that allows you to uh, gain insight into your spending. Uh, you can set a budget and receive alerts when budget is about to, um, to be breached or when someone creates uh, a new service that's over a certain threshold so that you're aware that your spending has gone up. And uh, the cost management module also allows you to determine which specific resources are costing you the most or have the most consumption or the highest consumption. And that allows you to uh, investigate whether the the high consumption is warranted or not. So you can go and pinpoint the exact um, resource or asset in Azure that you're paying for and how much you're paying for it. So for instance, um, this is one of the um, interfaces in, in the billing module. You can see uh, which virtual machine, virtual machine size uh, is costing you how much. It will give you the price. And also it will give you um, a projection based on current usage and current cost. So you, you know how much your um, virtual machine is costing you up to a certain date in a month and how much it will cost by the end of the month. And, and this is uh, an example of alert. Um, you can see that last month, the subscription cost me 3,015. Uh, my monthly max forecast is 3,011. And here I create uh, a budget and an alert. So I'm creating it for 102% um, of forecasted amount. So if my forecasted spending goes above uh, 3,111, then Val at Leg Assistance will receive an alert um, that the forecasted spend for the month is going over my budget. And this is useful if you have multiple uh, admins or subscription owners or co-owners uh, or owners of a resource group, for example, who are entitled with the right or privilege to create resources, but they're not uh, mindful of the cost. So you can uh, receive an alert that someone created a new resource that will increase your uh, monthly cost and um, you will go over budget. So the next uh, strategy is uh, use of hybrid benefits. Uh, so if you have uh, an enterprise agreement uh, with Microsoft, or if you have um, an open license agreement, um, for example, you, you buy Windows Server OS licensing. Um, some of the licensing SKUs allow you to use hybrid benefits. And, and what that means is, the same license for a Windows Server or a Windows Workstation that you use on-premise, you can use um, in Azure. Um, there are specific limitations as to how many um, virtual CPUs can be used, um, but that's something that, that should be looked at. But um, overall, you can save up to 49% 
on uh, Windows operating system licensing in Azure if you use hybrid benefits. And uh, you can just check the virtual machines that you're running in Azure uh, to see if the hybrid benefits are enabled and that will allow you to get a, a lower price for a monthly subscription for a virtual machine. Um, something to keep in mind also is that right now this is uh, on an honor system. So if you put a check mark here, basically you're attesting to the fact that you have hybrid benefits. So uh, something to check. Uh, by default, virtual machines don't have this enabled. You will be asked this during the virtual machine uh, creation process, but uh, we've noticed that many customers miss this point that you can skip through the virtual machine creation process. And if you didn't click um, yes here, then you will be charged a higher price. So just to make sure that if you have hybrid benefits for uh, Windows operating systems, that these are these are checked. Uh, network optimization. So um, this refers to using the right type of uh, network and service, um, and um, monitoring network traffic. Um, uh, right size for the service means. Um, that you're using network security groups where applicable and you're using uh, a uh, Azure firewall where applicable if you have it. So if you have a, um, a firewall, then external IPs should be bound to that firewall unless there is some specific customization that your application requires and that you don't have uh, network security groups that are, that are abandoned. Uh, sometimes we find the abandoned network security groups that customers are still paying for. And then uh, review outbound traffic um, in Azure. So when you see outbound traffic uh, in your Azure billing statement, um, it means that it's traffic that's going from Azure out to uh, your on-prem environment or out to your um, client machines uh, and the way that Microsoft uh, gets you to pay them more is any data that you put on uh, Azure or anything you put into the cloud is free. But when you want to take that data back uh, from Azure and bring it back to on-prem, you have to pay for it. So uh, make sure you're mindful of this and you look at the, uh, at the billing statement to make sure that you don't have high um, utilization for outbound traffic. And if you do see that you're starting to pay more and more for outbound traffic in Azure, it means that somebody or something is downloading large amounts of data from Azure uh, locally to your on-prem environment or to your clients. So um, public IP addresses. So this is a, a very common scenario. Um, uh, virtual machines are created, um, then they're removed. After a virtual machine or service is created, they have a public IP tied to them. But when the virtual machine is deleted or a service is deleted, that IP address, that public IP address, is not automatically removed from your subscription unless you have ticked the appropriate box. So what this represents is a, a customer subscription. You see, um, if you go into type and search uh, in Azure public IP addresses, it will give you a list. And if you see that there, are, there is an I, a public IP address like this that doesn't have uh, an association, it means that you have a public IP address that's not tied to anything and you're paying for it every month, but uh, it's not utilized because it's not associated to something. And it's not a default view because they don't want you to see this, of course. They want you to keep paying the money. But you can go to uh, here to manage view in uh, public IP addresses and add a column that's called associated to. Um, and once you save that, then it will give you this view right here where if you see that the association is blank, it means that the IP address is not bound to anything. So you can just delete them because they're not attached to an interface or a service. So you keep paying for those every month and, and not using them. 
So that's one of the um, techniques when it comes to network efficiency. Um, and here's what I was talking about, about uh, when I said data transfer out. So you can see that um, there is a data uh, store here that has standard data transfer out. And this customer is paying 233 pounds because this one is in, um, in UK. Um, what this means is somebody is downloading large amounts of data from um, that data store and you want to find out why. Uh, whether it's business appropriate or not, especially if you don't have this on the previous month's bill, but you do have it in the current month's bill, um, then you want to investigate because something has changed. You didn't pay for it before, but now you're downloading large amounts of data and now you're paying for it. So you, you want to know why. Um, monitoring and optimizing storage. So uh, in Azure, uh, you pay for storage separately. So let's say you have a, a virtual machine and you attach uh, a disk to it. Um, you can, in cost accounting, um, you can go to view cost by resource and then you choose a month or, or a period and uh, resource type disk. So this will give you a cost that you're paying for each disk. So you can see like in this subscription, there's one disk that costs 122. So you want to review that and figure out whether there is a business justification behind paying for uh, all of those storage disks. Sometimes there are ways to uh, you utilize cheaper storage or um, migrate to some other platform. For instance, um, I've seen many customers who migrate file servers from on-prem into Azure um, or shared storage. And, and we've been able to help those customers utilize significant savings by migrating file services into SharePoint instead. So if, if you have uh, a subscription with SharePoint Online, you get a certain amount of storage. Um, it's advanced to the point now where you can use that storage as same as file storage on Windows Server. <clears throat> and you get one terabyte of base storage uh, in SharePoint Online plus 10 gigabytes uh, per every user license. So if you have 100 users, um, you get one terabyte plus one terabyte so you have two terabytes of storage in SharePoint Online. So you can, instead of paying for the disks every month for file services, you can migrate those uh, files uh, and retain existing access uh, to SharePoint. And the cost of SharePoint storage is already included in your uh, Microsoft 365 or Office 365 subscription that you have um, such as business and uh, E3 or E5. So a company with a thousand users could have a petabyte of SharePoint storage. So why not utilize that since you're paying for it anyways and get rid of the file servers? So that's another approach. Um, spot instances and serverless computing. Um, there are some um, services available in, in Azure that uh, you don't need servers for um, any, <coughs> anymore, like Azure Functions uh, and Logic Apps, um, as well as, for example, Log Analytics, if you have uh, a locally hosted SIEM platform, you can migrate that to Log Analytics and reduce that cost instead of hosting files on-prem or paying for file servers uh, and in Azure. Um, and spot instances are uh, virtual machine instances that are not guaranteed, um, and those are for non-critical workloads. If you have, 
for example, um, a lab environment or uh, some machines they're using for testing or some other non-critical machines, you can put them on spot instances, which means that um, they'll be turned on when Microsoft has uh, excess capacity. Um, so someone else is not using their VMs, but you need to use you, yours so you can boot it up uh, if it's a lab or non-critical VM uh, when that excess capacity is available and, and you only pay for the time when you spin that machine up um, as a spot instance and that way you don't have to pay for it um, like a um, monthly virtual machine subscription. You only pay for what you use. Um, and typically there's always something available. Uh, if not in one region, you can look for, for a region that has excess capacity and spin up um, a non-critical machine there. Uh, so uh, backup optimization, um, we've seen many customers that replicate their backups to other regions. Uh, for instance, um, customers that ha have to have HIPAA compliance, they um, have a requirement to store backups off-site. So if they if they're migrated their data center into Azure, for them, off-site would be uh, another geolocation. So some uh, geolocations are more expensive than others. So we've been able to search out for them um, geolocations with significant savings. Um, and also um, for some geolocations, you pay more for traffic to replicate traffic from one data center to another. So this is something to look at. If you're using um, geo redundancy, or if you're replicating backups, uh, make sure that you're not paying too much for um, that data replication or offsite storage, because some uh, geolocations are more expensive than others. So it's it's worth reviewing to determine whether you have the uh, the best deal, and then. Um, reviewing and deleting unused resources. Um, this includes virtual machines, uh, storage and other devices. Uh, for instance, we can run a report that will show uh, virtual machines that have either not been uh, spun up in a while, storage that's not attached to any virtual machine um, or other services that are not used. So um, it's important to run um, a review of resources that you're using once in a while so that uh, you can confirm what you're paying for is actually what you're using. There's also uh, cost projection and analysis uh, in your subscription. So you can see um, your projected cost as well as um, current accumulated cost to make to make sure that you're not running over your expectations and you can also use um, a budget for that. Um, you can use um, Azure policy uh, in order to uh, specify uh, either restrictions for users or admins who can create uh, what virtual machines or resources in Azure. Um, so you can lock down permissions. Um, certain group of admins has access to a specific resource group or create certain types of uh, resources of virtual machines. Uh, and this is to help prevent um, unintended configurations that can lead to increased costs. Um, so you can lock down uh, requirements for resources with uh, Azure policy or lock down who has permissions to create certain resources to make sure that 
um, it's in line with your business objectives. And if someone needs to go outside of what's permitted, that then they ask you. For example, you don't want somebody going and creating um, a firewall that's going to cost you <clears throat> uh, $700 per month if you already have one um, and you already have a firewall policy. Um, you want to make sure that that capability is locked down to uh, the highest level of admins and that you don't have unintended creation of such resources. Same for um, storage accounts. Uh, they can become quite expensive or uh, restrict certain users. To, for example, I've seen this. Um, uh, one customer had an issue where developers would go and create uh, expensive virtual machines all the time to test their application. So we had to lock down that group of developers to only creating uh, certain types of virtual machines, um, the cheaper kind, because they would get like VMs that were three to four hundred dollars a month, and they would just leave them running and forget about them, and then go create something new. So you can control that pro with the uh, Azure policy. Um, operating system licensing. So uh, we would recommend a current inventory of uh, Windows OS. Uh, to know exactly how many devices you have um, either as virtual machines in Azure, but also uh, on-prem and uh, out in in the wild with um, your internal customers, because um, most organizations want to and, and are required to have an accurate count for their licensing true up. Uh, so, so you want to make sure that the that the number of Windows licenses uh, is correct for workstations and servers. Um, if you know the proper count of operating systems, you can uh, provision uh, licensing accordingly. Um, most of the time, uh, customers don't know how many devices they have, and you ask somebody, who handles licensing, they'll tell you 400, and somebody who does patching, they'll tell you 500, and somebody who does system management, they'll say 600, and the management thinks they only have 300. So it's important to have that uh, proper inventory and understand what type of licensing you have and how you're paying for it. Um, because now you can have, uh, with Microsoft 365, a Windows client license included with your uh, M365 licensing, but at the same time with your enterprise agreement, you're going to have a, a bunch of uh, Windows enterprise licenses that are standalone. So you don't want to overlap one type of licensing with the other so that you're not paying um, twice for the same operating system or so that you don't have um, under subscription. Um, utilizing hybrid benefits uh, that I've mentioned and also um, volume activation management tool um, is a Microsoft utility that you can run to have workstations check in the type of licensing that they're using um, into this tool. Um, it's something that you would install um, on an operating system um, and set up a, a group policy for um, reporting or um, a setting uh, in Intune, for example, if you are if you have machines out that are cloud managed uh, through Intune, you can do that. But um, the uh, volume activation management tool will help you account for the type of licenses you have for the clients and how they're being used. And if you know the proper number of um, licenses that you're using and the type of licenses, this will help you uh, properly um, purchase licenses in the future or for next year so that you're not oversubscribing and paying too much, but at the same time, um, not undersubscribing and that you are in, in compliance with the Microsoft uh, licensing agreement. 
Um, so this is a, a typical or one of the engagements that we had. Um, this is uh, before we did our review of Azure costs, uh, the customer was paying 3,600 and then, and you can see here vir virtual machines were 1,300 of that. Uh, they were paying quite a bit for storage and VM licenses. And then the next month after uh, our review and recommendations, uh, next month their, their virtual machine cost was cut by more than half. And they also saved some on the licensing. Um, so it's not just about virtual machine licensing costs, but it's um, it's everything in in accumulation. Uh, if you can save by using reservations and spot instances and doing a cleanup um, and optimizing your network traffic and your resources. If you save a little bit in, in various places, it's going to add up to a lot. So we, after conducting our review, we've had um, we've had some customers where we successfully cut their bill in half or at least by 40%. So it's something um, to consider. Uh, another area is um, Microsoft 365 usage and licensing. Um, you want to check how many users are using the service actively uh, and whether the users need the license that they have. So in many cases, um, executives in the company don't need the same license as a truck driver, for example, because um, executives will need information protection and a higher level of defense for their email with Defender for 365, but a truck driver only needs um, a basic license or an E3, whether where an executive needs an E5 with a device license. So you want to make sure that the role of um, the user fits their use, right? And then another issue that we have seen frequently is that departed, departed users still have their license assigned to them. So in many ca cases, um, this is statistic from, uh, from Microsoft, 82% of organizations keep a license assigned to a disabled user to maintain their OneDrive. So what happens is, um, a user leaves the organization, their account gets disabled, and they get signed out of their sessions, but they still have a, a license assigned to them because their OneDrive is being preserved or their mailbox is being preserved. Um, so this is fairly frequent. And then the users, over time, they add up. So you keep carrying that cost because you may not have um, a process for archiving data of users who have left, or maybe the proper process was not followed, or maybe the organization thought that the user went on maternity leave, but in actuality, while they were maternity leave, they found a different job and they never came back. So this, this happens fairly um, frequently. For example, uh, this was an actual uh, customer. They had 23, uh, 2,273 uh, licenses, and these were uh, marks of 365 E5 licenses. But out of those, we ran a report and we, so this is something we can run um, and I can show you how to run it if you're interested. Ease license me means that they have a license. Block credential means that their account is disabled. So 
the user left at some point and they're still licensed. And this particular customer had 91 users like that um, where the user was disabled, but they still had a license. So this customer's cost for the E5 licenses was $57 a month, which added up to $5,187. Uh, and once we went through the process of uh, archiving their data for the users who needed, whose data needed to be saved, like OneDrive or Mailbox, then this customer realized a saving of $62,000 per year or $5,100 per month. So you see that even with 4% of oversubscribed licenses, um, the savings can be significant. Um, so you wanna you wanna go through this uh, process of reviewing licenses assigned in your uh, Office three sixty five subscription and reduce that if possible. And that's it. So that was about twenty two slides and 22 minutes, um, please uh, follow us on LinkedIn and send me your questions. Uh, you can also visit our blog at blog.legosystem.com and um, I'll be happy to help you or answer your questions. And I look forward to seeing you again in um, two or three weeks at the next webinar. Thank you and bye-bye.